Hello and thank you for joining us. We've got a jam-packed show for you today. This week, Joe Biden was inaugurated President of the United States. Mitch McConnell denounced Donald Trump. The My Pillow guy misunderstood the First Amendment. Alexei Navalny was arrested and more. I'm Ian Stevens and you're watching the Lucretia Report Week in Review. Let's get into it. <laughs> Our lead story this week is, of course, the transfer of presidential power that happened yesterday. Early yesterday morning, Donald Trump left the White House. At an awkward ceremony at Joint Base Andrews, Donald Trump bid farewell, making an off-the-cuff speech where he still didn't mention Joe Biden and talked about the coronavirus in the past tense before flying off into the sunset. Except it was morning, and the sunset was Florida, I guess. A few hours later, Joe Biden was sworn in as the 46th president of the United States and Kamala Harris as vice president. Significantly, Biden called out extremism and white supremacy in his speech and called to defeat it. Let's hope he follows through on that. This was an unconventional inauguration, however. Concerned about the pandemic meant that crowds were not present, with only official invitees present and no inaugural balls, and Washington, D.C. seemed to be in a state of military occupation in order to prevent further insurrections, with 25,000 soldiers present in the city and a green zone set up around the Capitol. Before leaving office, Donald Trump issued dozens of pardons, including for rapper Lil Wayne and for his former chief strategist Steve Bannon, but notably not for himself, his children, Republican lawmakers Rudy Giuliani, or most tragically, Joe Exotic. Reports indicate that his lawyers talked him out of pardoning himself and his children. Also, in a wonderful pardon gift, it appears that an Atlanta prosecutor is investigating Donald Trump for attempting to pressure Brad Raffensperger into committing elections fraud. There were no major disruptions to the inauguration or in the days leading up to it this week, and that was surely because Washington, D.C. and most state capitals were under a state of armed occupation. There were 10 times as many American troops in Washington, D.C. this week as there were in Afghanistan, not to mention thousands of police. We now have the first charges of conspiracy for the attack against the Capitol, as three members of the far-right terrorist organization, the Oath Keepers, are being accused of conspiring ahead of time and raising a group to attack the Capitol. The charges allege that they planned to attack the Capitol and continued to coordinate inside. The charges mention a group of up to 10, but correspondence between the defendants has mentioned a group of 30 to 40, and video shows them moving in formation and wearing tactical equipment as they move through the crowd into the Capitol. Upon review by the FBI and the Army, 12 members of the National Guard were removed from the mission in D.C., two for connections to far-right extremist groups and 10 for undisclosed other red flags. And according to court documents for the prosecution of QAnon shaman Jake Angeli Chansley, Strong evidence, including Chansley's own words and actions in the Capitol, supports that the intent of the Capitol rioters was to capture and assassinate elected officials. Possible foreign support for the rioters is also being investigated in response to suspicious Bitcoin payments from French individuals, as well as an accusation against Riley Williams that she stole a laptop from Nancy Pelosi's office with the intent of selling it to Russian intelligence. Because America first, am I right? Following being sworn in yesterday, Biden signed numerous executive orders, so I wanted to run through those really quickly. Biden rejoined the Paris Climate Accords and the World Health Organization, appointing Dr. Fauci to lead the U.S. delegation. He imposed a mask mandate on federal property and interstate travel, appointed a coronavirus response coordinator, he terminated the national emergency that Trump used to build the wall, rescinded the Muslim ban, canceled the permit for the Keystone XL pipeline, extended a pause on student loan payments and a moratorium on evictions, directed every executive agency to review its state of racial equality and deliver an action plan, rescinded Trump's racist 1776 commission, ended a plan to exclude non-citizens from the census, prohibited workplace discrimination in the federal government based on sexual orientation and gender discrimination, reinstated the moratorium on federal executions, and rescinded the Trump executive order that brought in the category of illegal immigrants eligible for deportation. More executive orders about COVID, the economy, and immigration are expected in this next week. So subscribe and we'll talk about the big ones next week. <laughs> Meanwhile, Donald Trump's impeachment trial for the attack against the Capitol will start soon and it's not looking good for him. He has not tried to pardon himself or any of the others involved in the attack and Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, ooh, 
That feels good to say has publicly criticized Donald Trump for the first time, saying that the attack against the Capitol was provoked by the president and other powerful people. And the lawyer for Jake and Jelly slash Chansley, who we heard about a moment ago, says that his client felt that he was sent there by Donald Trump, which is not great for Donald Trump. <laughs> Meanwhile, COVID is still a thing. 123,000 people in the United States were hospitalized on Wednesday, and we recently surpassed 400,000 deaths, almost as many as the number of Americans who died in the Second World War. 60% of all the deaths in this pandemic have now happened since the election, and this happens just as we're discovering that there was no strategic supply of vaccines. Do you remember last week when we reported that the CDC would be releasing all of the doses that were allegedly being saved for a second dose? Well, that was a weird choice since apparently those doses did not exist. Amidst this massive failure, just adding on to all the other massive failures of the last year, President Biden has asked Surgeon General Jerome Adams to step down, which, yeah. And finally, an independent commission has reported that China and the World Health Organization responded slowly to the pandemic, which contributed to its spread, a charge which China disputes. For more information on how China handled the pandemic after that, watch this video I made. My Pillow is being removed from a number of retailers, including Bed Bath & Beyond and Kohl's, after their CEO supported the attack on the Capitol and continued to spread conspiracy theories after it. Like with many instances in recent weeks, this has gotten many people shouting about free speech, and I want to take a moment to read part of the First Amendment to you. The First Amendment says, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, etc., etc., press, assembly. Emphasis on Congress shall make no law. Bed Bath & Beyond is, and I hope this doesn't come as too much of a shock to you, not Congress. Nor is Twitter or YouTube. The First Amendment only protects you from the government. It says that they can't put you in jail for most things that you say, but it does not say that there can't be any consequences. This has been a public service announcement. After arriving back in Russia from Germany, where he was being treated after being poisoned allegedly by the Russian government, Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny was immediately arrested at the airport. He is accused of probation violations related to an old conviction for embezzlement, which Navalny claims was a political prosecution in retribution for his criticism of the government. The court has ordered that Navalny be held for 30 days while parole board reviews his case. If they find him guilty, he could be facing years in prison after that. In other headlines, Mexico has declined to prosecute former Secretary of Defense Salvador Cienfuegos on charges related to drug trafficking. The NRA has filed for bankruptcy and moved to Texas in an attempt to flee a lawsuit in New York seeking their dissolution. They will likely still be subject to that suit, however. 6,000 Amazon workers in Alabama are forming the company's first union. This comes not long after workers at Google formed a union. More fires are breaking out in California and across the West in January because, of course, climate change isn't real. And Monday was Martin Luther King Jr. Day, where politicians who are the antithesis of what MLK stood for tweeted empty quotes about him. That's the news of the week. Thank you for joining us for it. To get the news every Thursday, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. And to get this and more in print form every Friday, sign up for our newsletter at lucreciareport.com slash email hyphen list. And to support independent progressive media, go to patreon.com slash lucreciareport. Thank you for joining us, and I'll see you on Saturday.